Hello everyone, welcome to Jiggy Math. So this time, we are going to talk about derivative of natural logarithmic function from first principles. Now let us recall first the natural logarithmic function. So it is a function that is defined as ln x, okay, ln of x, or this is the logarithm of x to the base e. Now as you remember, this is how the graph looks like, where in the domain is all positive numbers, Okay, uh, so that is x is greater than 0, and um, range is all real numbers, wherein y is an element of real number. Notice that the graph is asymptotic, asymptotic in the sense that as x is approaching 0, your y value is approaching the negative infinity. Okay, so the vertical asymptote is uh, x is equal to 0, which is the equation of the y-axis. Now, the other side, as you can see, as x gets larger and larger, as x is approaching positive infinity, your y values is also approaching the positive infinity. So this is how our natural logarithmic function behaves. Now, how are we going to get the derivative of the natural logarithmic function from the first prin principles? Now, the first principles is this, which is actually the derivative of the function is equal to the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h as h approaches 0. So from the function, so let's identify the f of x plus h, so which is actually the ln x plus h minus ln x all over h. So what we can do here now is uh, apply the law of logarithm. So since this is a subtraction, express this as a single logarithm and it becomes a quotient. So this is what is uh, this is what will happen. So the limit of one over h ln x plus h over x. Now the x over x can be uh, split as one plus h over x. Now what we are trying to do here is we are uh, separating the x from the h because later on we are going to evaluate the limit. Uh, in terms of uh, h. So we can let another variable, let's say t is equal to h over x. So that is h is equal to x t. All right. Now here, you don't have to worry about x being equal to zero because as you remember, the domain of ln x is x is greater than zero. So x can never be equal to zero here. Now we are going to change our h here to t and notice that if h is approaching 0, t is also approaching 0, right? So 0 divided by any number is actually equal to 0. So if h is approaching 0, therefore t is also equal to, t is also approaching 0. So now we can uh, express our limit as 1 over xt because our h is xt, then ln 1 plus t. So this is now in terms of t and x. So uh, just like what I said here, when h is approaching 0, t is also approaching 0. So we can do it that way. Then the next thing to do is, um, okay, we can separate this two, which is 1 over x times 1 over t. So now uh, we are somewhat very close to separating the x from uh, t. Okay, next thing to do is, uh, so this is now 1 over x, apply the law of logarithm. So 1 over t will become a power of 1 plus t. So this is now limit of 1 over x times ln of 1 plus t to the power of 1 over t. Okay, so the next thing to do is, uh, of course, since we are uh, getting the limit, actually the limit of 1 over x um, is just 1 over x. So we can bring it out. So 1 over x times the limit of ln 1 plus t over uh, raised to the power 1 over t as t is approaching 0. Now what we can do here is, uh, let me use this pen. All right, what we can do here is uh, look at this one, okay? So if we are going to graph this, if we are going to graph this, you can see, you can see that the graph is approaching a certain number when t is approaching 0 from both sides, meaning 0 from the left and 0 from the right, okay? And um, note that 
when we graph it, is actually approaching a certain value, which is E. I'm using Desmos now to show you what is the function approaching width when x is approaching 0. So I'm changing the t to x. So we have the function 1 plus x to the power of 1 over x. All right. So as you can see here, when x is approaching 0 from the left, and when is x is approaching 0 from the right, the function is approaching a certain number which happens to be e, okay? And e is approximately 2.718, all right? That means our derivative now, f prime of x is equal to uh, 1 over x, then it is ln e. And we know that ln e is just equal to 1. So this verifies that the derivative of ln x is just equal to 1 over x, all right? So remember this, so the basic function of ln x, the derivative of that is just equal to 1 over x. Now let's try another example here, okay, which is um, y is equal to ln x squares. Okay, so this is not ln x. If it just happens to be ln x, then the derivative is 1 over x, but this one is ln x squared. So for us to find the derivative of this, we are going to use the chain rule. So if you remember, chain rule is dy over dx is equal to dy over du times du over dx. Okay, so by doing this, uh, we have to let u be equal to x squared. And then uh, we can now differentiate this in terms of x. So du over dx is just equal to 2x. Now, so we already have this du dx is equal to 2x. So what we need now is the dy over du. So by letting u be equal to x squared, we actually have rewritten our ln x squared to ln u. And you can see here that we can differentiate the y with respect to u. So that becomes dy over du is equal to, as you know, ln u, which we have just derived is 1 over u. So that means our dy dx now is equal to dy over du, which is 1 over x squared. Actually, it came from 1 over u, but our u is x squared. So this is now 1 over x squared times du over dx, which is 2x. So simplifying that, and then it will give us the derivative of ln x squared is equal to 2 over x. Okay? No. Okay, so this is a very important um, uh, formula. So we're in if our ln of something is not just equal to x, but can be also a function, just like x squared, uh, the previous example that we had. So ge generalizing that, if we are differentiating ln fx or ln of f of x, that would be equal to 1 over f of x times the derivative of f of x, which is actually the chain rule. Okay, so let's try it out for this one. So if we have y is equal to ln of the square root of 1 minus x. So this is going to be our f of x. Okay, so again, um, let's use the formula. So that means we need to differentiate our f of x, which is actually the square root of 1 minus x. So f prime of x, the derivative of this is 1 half times 1 of minus x raised to the power of negative 1 half, then times the derivative of the, the one inside the bracket, and that will give us negative 1. The derivative of 1 minus x is negative 1. Okay? So this is just the derivative of square root of 1 minus x. Okay? Which is the f prime of x here in, the, in our formula. So uh, to complete the derivative, we will now have 1 over f of x, which is basically 1 over square root of 1 minus x then times the derivative of this f of x, okay? So putting it nicely, and then we will now have negative 1 half times 1 over 1 minus x. How did it become like that? Because 1 minus x to the power of negative 1 half is the same as 1 over square root of 1 minus x. And then to be multiplied to this, so that means we will be able to cancel out the assert, uh, so resulting to 1 minus x. So therefore, the derivative now is negative 1 over 2 times 1 minus x, 
or you can also make the numerator positive and um, that will be 1 over 2 times x minus 1. Okay, so that is the derivative of ln square root of 1 minus x. Now, what about this one? Differentiate with respect to x. So the given function is ln x all over 1 plus x. So whenever there is a fraction here, then it reminds us to use our quotient rule. Then the quotient rule in differentiation is uh, if we let, if, if our f of x is a quotient of u and v, then the derivative of that is equal to u prime v minus u v prime divided by v squared. So if we let our numerator to be our u and denominator 1 plus x to be v, so following the formula, so we will have, uh, have u prime. So u prime is the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x. Then we just copy v, which is 1 plus x. Then minus u, so copy the numerator, which is ln x. And then the derivative of v, which is 1 plus x, is just 1. All right? And then all over the denominator square or the square of the denominator. So simplifying that and then we will get 1 over x, then 1 over x times x is 1, then ln x times 1 is just ln x. So that's it for today. I hope that you learned something from me regarding how to differentiate the natural logarithmic function from the first principles. So thank you once again and see you soon.